This week we explore some Garn railway history as we head towards the Streslokie Desert. We're then shocked to discover a ghost town with an incredible history. So stick around, we'd love you to join us. So this morning we were up before daylight, all with the sole purpose of trying to get to Margaret's siding to capture it during sunrise. As you head along the Unandata track, this is one of a number of sidings that you come across. So if you are going this way, make sure you stop in and enjoy and experience this place. Good morning everyone! From a very chilly <laughs> lake air. So. It's very cold, it's about 5 degrees, so we're a bit surprised by how cold it was. We knew it wasn't going to be super warm, but we were underprepared for our clothes. But that's a, that's a side issue. Look, it's incredible. Um, we stayed at Cowled Springs last night. It's a, it's a really nice little place, so uh, I hope the light's okay, but I really wanted you to see lake air uh, in the background. Um, today's a a, f a bit of an unknown day, isn't it? It is. Um, we're not is. sure. We're not sure what today's going to bring in the sense that we're heading back. Well, from Coward Springs, 130 k's from here. What about 100-ish k's? Yeah. Um, we've seen some ruins already, um, but we're heading back through Maori and then uh, to is it Lynhurst? To Lynhurst, and then about 130, 140 k's up the Streslecky, um to the Blanche Water ruins. And the part that's the unknown is the Strasleki. No one's talking about it, no one's been on it, so I just don't know. With all the weather they've had down here, we're not sure what, what the roads are going to be like. They could be incredible, they could be like the Birdsville track was, or they could be absolutely shite. So um, we'll just have to wait and see, and that's going to determine very much on how far we get today. Right now, we're going to enjoy this as well we can, and then we're going to get in the car because it's bloody cold. It's so, cold. See you soon. The Curdy Merker siding dates back to 1886. It's the last standing station yard of the old Garn Railway. Still standing at this site is the railway building, the water tower, the desalinisation plant, a fetless cottage and also the Stewart Creek Bridge. They've all weathered the test of time and still stand strong despite the extremely harsh conditions out in this location. All of these sidings or fetlers cottages were basically all the home of maintenance workers. They lived in these little cottages scattered all along the railway, ready to jump on and do any maintenance required. It certainly must have been an amazing lifestyle. As I wandered along this veranda, I couldn't help but wonder what the life of these workers was really like. I 
I thought I'd include this footage very quickly. It was a problem that we're having more and more. The kestrels just seemed to really want to take out the drone. This particular one I was really lucky, I could actually see the kestrel coming. It did make it challenging to try and capture a lot of footage on this trip. I struggled to find much information on the Wonga and his sighting. One thing though that was really upsetting was just how badly this place had been vandalised. It still blows me away that people think that they have the right to do this to a historic building, any building for that fact. With this being one of the few sightings with us still having a roof on it, I do wonder if people do actually squat in it. So as we're heading back, we're heading from west to east on the Unandata track. This is actually the last of the water towers before you get to Mari. This would have to be one of the biggest surprises of the entire trip. We went there looking for the Farina Underground Bakery. Unfortunately, we're out of season, so we just missed it. And I mean, we'd missed it just by maybe weeks. But what we had no idea, even with Lisa doing all the research, just how much of this town still existed. So the town was actually originally formed in 1878 and the plan was actually to create Acre Block, effectively creating a little suburb. In its day this was a full town, it had everything from town halls, multiple pubs, actually it had two police stations and it was still operating well into the 1900s. Sadly, the writing was on the wall for the town. In 1957, the school closed and it was shortly followed in 1960 by the post office. Incredibly, by the early 2000s, Farina was considered ruins. It's incredible to think that something that was once people's pride and joy could this quickly become effectively a ghost town? I found this interesting. Reading between the lines, I imagine that the Angel's Rest would have been a fairly wild place. It's quite ironic that it's actually literally next door to what was the original police station. I suppose a major advantage is it wouldn't be very far to take them if you had to lock someone up.
It was interesting looking at Moffat's house. It is very evident that they obviously had money. Everything was just that little bit better, even simple things like the skirting boards, the dressings around the fireplace, much higher quality than some of the other buildings. We spent so much time here, way more than we ever expected to, and I've captured so much footage. We actually will do a standalone episode on this with a lot more detail because there was just so much there. If you are going past, you do have to look for the exit. It is very easy to miss, but do yourself a favor. Make sure you call in and check this place out. It is absolutely incredible. And if the bakery is open, make sure you call in. Apparently it's amazing food. <laughs>